How you doing guys? This is Tim again from G.I. Joe Immortal and we are going to check out the 1983 G.I. Joe Wolverine vehicle. I just acquired this and it was in such great shape that I had to buy it and I got it for a very good price. It did not have the figure cover girl and I am working on getting that figure now but I figure we can go ahead and take a look at this vehicle um, I did get the blueprints with it so we're gonna take a look at this figure or vehicle now and uh, see how it holds up this was made in 1983 first of all we're gonna let's read a little bit about it I do have it from the book here and there is cover girl right there the picture I'm trying to keep the glare from happening here there is cover girl and there is the wolverine it is cover girl's armor plated wolverine sold well on retail shelves in 1983 as it came with 12 individually labeled stinger ground to ground missiles where each missile is individually numbered hx422 number 1 through 12 a ridged walkway that leads the driver into the vehicle a tow hook on the rear in order order to attach to the whirl attach the whirlwind which was also available which is right there um, you could pair those up really nicely or any other it does have a standard tow hook on the back so you could hook up whatever you wanted but uh, it also had a removable hood with sleeping bags molded onto the front for bivouac purposes and to show engine detail a rescue cable with four separate rescue cable cleats, two on the rear and two on the front of the vehicle, and a main turret that rotates 360 degrees and pivots 90 degrees. Although the vehicle itself is common to find for sale online and in collectible stores, the Wolverine's rescue cable is a tough part to locate unbroken, selling for $30 to $40 each if truly mint and unbroken. Easily lost pieces are those 12 missiles, the engine cover, and the rescue cable. Now, a loose example can go from $50 to $82 plus. Uh, I got mine for well under $50, so I was happy to get the vehicle, and it looks like they did a really good job on the, on the uh, application of the labels and... Although I didn't get CoverGirl with it, I think I'll be able to find her pretty easily. And it's not like someone else can't ride in that. Now, it was in the cartoons a little bit, but it was in the comic book quite a bit. But uh, let's take a look at the vehicle now. As I said, I who do have the tow hook, of course, mine is broken. And the reason it was broken, from what I heard from other uh, sites like HCC, uh, it was not, just not long enough to hook to that and it put too much stress on it and over time it would just break. It didn't really happen from play. It was just wasn't quite long enough and one of these ends would break off usually around right there because it just wasn't long enough to hook. So you'll see a lot of these guys just set it in there. They will not hook it to this end piece because it puts too much stress on it. And I would advise the same if you happen to get a complete cable. So as we can take a look, it is a tracked vehicle. And uh, this is the side view of the vehicle here. Here's the front view of it. Um, it is pretty clean for, an, uh, for a 1983 example. Um, there's the uh, details. I have done no clean to I just received this today, as a matter of fact out of the mail and there's the other side here we'll get into the engine cover detail shortly but there's the uh, the guns it does have all the missiles and the tow cable and the engine cover so it is pretty much complete except for a uh, an unbroken cable which they said you know you can pay up to 50 bucks a piece just for one of those and there's the back with the Wolverine label on the back. 
The only labels I see us missing is there would be a G.I. Joe ones here, but that's okay. It would say G.I. Joe on the side here on each side. But that's okay because it makes it kind of a uh, generic vehicle. But um, So let's get into it. It says number one is I do have the... Uh, the instruction sheet here but here is the maintenance access panel which is showing as number one which would be right here and that's the maintenance access panel up here and that's for the guns then you have number two is the modular missile racks here and we'll take one of these missiles out let's take this one out here hard to do one-handed they fit in there nice and snug, which is good and bad. Let's do it with the right hand. All right, got one. Okay, sorry about that. Um, here's what the missiles look like, and this is number five. They have the labels on them, they're one through 12. So there's one of the missiles there. I don't think they're modeled after anything. But uh, let's try and get a there's a good view of it. And there is 12 missiles altogether. Here's your tow cable here that is broken. Like I said, there was a lot of stress from when it was hooked on the end here. It just wasn't quite long enough, I think, and it just caused too much tension. And they ended up breaking because they got brittle over time. Let's go to number three, which is the main battle turret, which, uh, where is number three, which is this, the main battle turret, which will spin 90 degrees up like so, and then it will spin 360, should go all the way around, and it does, it goes all the way around like so, and these will go at about 90 degrees. Don't want to put any extra stress on them. Um, modeled after a pretty much an American tank. Um, I forget the name of it at the moment, but it looks similar to one of the marine tanks that I used to see. I can look that up later. So let's move on to number four, which number four is the armor plated superstructure, which is all this underneath here. And then number five. They put a lot of extra thing drive bogies which is uh five is the rescue cable cleats which is these up front here that's where you hook the cables to so you can pull some people out and there's some on the back also here there's the standard tow hook which we'll show an example how that works here in a second and number six is drive bogies now drive bogies i'm not sure what that is oh well, that'd be these right here. The drive bogies are in the front. That's part of what you would call the tank. Uh, seven would be the idler bogies, which are the other ones, the bigger ones. Those are the, those are idler bogies, and that is the drive bogie, which is part of a tank, part of the track system. And then we have the walkway, which is number eight which they're calling, let's see, if it's spinning around this way, they're calling this the walkway going up into. So you would step up here and walk into it that way. And it looks like it shows four, four of them there, which there are. There are four little panels there. And then number nine, which would be the command seat cockpit. And it does not have a whole lot of detail in there. Just pretty basic. Let's see if there's any kind of controls or anything in there. It does have some pedals in there on the inside. Actually, that's the wheel from the other side. I thought it was a pedal. Just a plain old seat. There's no controls or anything like that on the side. So just your basic cockpit. Now you got your ground equipment, which is number 10, would be, where is that located? That would be on the top. That would be your shovel and things like that. Of 
background equipment. Um, yeah, some would be on this side there. There you go, your shovel and your sledgehammer. That's your ground equipment they're saying. And then you have number 11, which would be a fuel bladder ventilators. Fuel bladder ven ventilators. That's a mouthful. That would be, or it's these right here. Your fuel bladder ventilators up in here, I guess. What are they showing that? That's the cockpit. 11, yeah, that's just showing those there. Those are vent vents. And then number 12 would be a rescue cable, which is that. We've already talked about that. And then uh, let's go on to the sleeping bags, which are located right here. They're not removable. They're just there for show. But you can, can have uh, a couple of G.I. Joes uh, take a nap when they're not shooting at Cobra. And then you got 14 is engine oil filler access, which is number 14 which is right here and then number 15 would be engine turbocharger housing which is right here and then 16 would be the engine main air intake filter canisters which are along the side that's these here And then 17 would be the missiles, ground-to-ground -ground missiles, which are right here. And I've already showed you one there. They are numbered 1 through 12. And then you have an aid kit, tool case, small arm storage, which is number 18, which is all supposedly in here, right here. And that's your aid kit and your tool case. It is because it says so. <laughs> And then you have your external radiators, which number 19, which will be on the back. External radiators. I'm not sure what they're talking about there. Um, it says it's underneath there, so uh, I'm not... Oh, that would be these external radiators. Okay, that's these vents right here. Those are external radiators. And then you have a tow hook on the back, which is your standard tow hook. Let's take a look and see how that works right now. We're going to move Breaker out of the way since he's going to be driving today. And this is not a G.I. Joe tow hook, but it'll work with just about any tow hook, any standard tow hook. You just latch it on the back there. And Breaker's going to hop in and go for a ride. I'm not going to put him all the way in. but uh, And you can move along that way. And it works just fine. That's your tow hook. And then we're going to take a look at the front, the other side, and see this is just the assembly of everything and where the labels go. And that's pretty much it for that. But uh, as far as this vehicle goes, I, I was really happy to get it. And uh, I, I just was really, really into how well it was preserved for 83. There's not no big gouges or a little bit of dust could use a little bit of, of a tight cleaning on it. But, uh, I mean, what a nice example. Of course, the tow hook was going to be broken, but, you know, I can always look for one later. Um, now, let's take a look at the engine cover and uh, see how it looks in there. I'm going to unlatch that. And there's your engine detail on the inside, which is quite a bit of detail. They did a really nice job on this uh, on this vehicle. Not too crazy about no detail on the seats, but yeah, I can live with that. Uh, but there's your latch. That's really good. I really like how the missile system works. Um, air to air, so it could take out some of those Cobra Rattlers or some of those his tanks but uh all in all a very good vehicle um like i said it came with 
CoverGirl. Now, it wasn't included when I got it, but uh, I can always find a, another uh, uh, CoverGirl figure. And you can usually get those for around 10 or 15 bucks, depending on, uh, depending on condition, usually. I wouldn't pay no more than maybe $20 for one, maybe. But uh, I'd like to find that tow cable. That would be nice. Um, I may have one laying around in my extra parts. I just haven't looked yet. I was just real excited to get this one. Is It is an original vehicle from 1983. And just all around, I give this... Uh, um, probably about a seven as far as a grade to it and the reason it's a seven is because i don't like the open part there i mean just take that guy out and you're pretty much done plus i don't really like that there's no controls they should have had something maybe made a deeper hatch to where they could at least cover up or at least have something coming up for protection i do like the engine cover and I do like that they're not spring-loaded missiles because you know that would be the first thing to break on this thing. But I do like that there's a tow hook. I do like the selection of uh, applica applica uh, applicating the labels and uh, the selection of the labels that went with it. I just think it looks cool. I like the color of it. Um, I like that the tracks are a darker gray. And I like that military look. It is a very militar militaristic vehicle. Um, and that's what I liked about G.I. Joe in the early goings in the 80s. Uh, I'm a big collector of G.I. Joe. And starting from 64, I had the big... As you can see on my channel, I do a lot of the 12-inch figures too. But there is Breaker. And he's taking the place of CoverGirl right now. Like I said, she was in the comic books with this vehicle there, and I, I guess Clutch was kind of hitting on her a little bit. But Cover Girl was a, I guess she was a high fashion model as well as a part of the G.I. Joe team, which, okay, whatever. But uh, a really cool vehicle that I just picked up, and I'm glad to share it with you. And we'll be back with more G.I. Joe stuff in the future, so... You guys have a great evening, and this is Tim from G.I. Joe Immortal, and have a good night.